Hey, everyone. Ever get that, like, kind of nervous feeling when you want something to be easy, but then you also worry about security? Yeah. It's kind of like that classic trade-off. Yeah, you know? uh, sure. Convenience versus security. That's kind of like the crypto world in a nutshell. Right. And today we're diving deep into a case that mm. really shows this. Yeah. A recent vulnerability discovered in Tangem Wallets. Have you heard of those? Oh, yeah. Tangem wallets. What makes this case so interesting is they're really known for being easy to use. Yeah. Like, especially for beginners getting into crypto. And their wallets are these cool, like, physical cards, yeah. uh, cool. cold wallets. So they're not always connected to the Internet, which makes them more secure. Right. But even with all that, you know, even with a good reputation, vulnerabilities can still happen. It's true. And that's what makes this so interesting. It reminds us that no system is perfect. Yeah. Even when they're designed with security as a top priority. We've got this article here. It was written by a Tangem affiliate, someone who actually uses and recommends their products. So we're getting a real insider's view of how this all went down. And that's key because you get the human element then. Yeah. You know, it's not just about the code. It's about trust and reputation and how a company reacts to this kind of thing. Exactly. So let's get down to it. What exactly was this vulnerability and how did it even come up? Well, it all started with a bug. Okay. A pretty specific one, actually. You had to set up your Tangem wallet using a seed phrase, and then okay. you had to click the contact support button within the first seven days. Oh, wow. So kind of a random combination, right? Yeah. But if you did those things, it caused the bug to expose your private key. Hold on, wait. Before we go any further, let's explain this for our listeners who might not be super familiar with all the crypto terms. Sure. We're talking about private keys and seed phrases. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? And why is it such a big deal to have a private key exposed? Right. That's a really important difference. Imagine your crypto is like a treasure chest. Okay. Your seed phrase is like the master key. It can unlock the whole thing. Got it. But your private key is only a key to a specific compartment in the chest. Right. Losing either one is bad, but well, in this case, exposing your private key is really bad because it potentially gives someone access to that specific crypto. So it's like leaving the key to your Bitcoin vault under the doormat. Exactly. Not good. But luckily, according to the article, it seems like no wallets were actually compromised or funds lost. That's right, as far as we know. So that's good. But that doesn't mean this wasn't serious. It still raises the question, how could this even happen in the first place with a company that focuses so much on security? What went wrong? Okay, let's put our detective hats on and figure this out. What caused this vulnerability? Well, from what we see in the article, it seems like there were two main things. Okay. Legacy code and NFC logging bugs. Imagine you're renovating an old house. Okay. And you're adding on a new fancy addition, oh. but you forget to make sure the old wiring can handle it. Uh oh. That's kind of what happened here. <laughs> there was some old code in the Tangem app, just kind of left over from older versions. Uh -huh. And it didn't get checked when they added the feature to set up a wallet with a seed phrase. I see. So adding something new and shiny without checking the foundation. Exactly. Makes sense. But you also said NFC logging bugs. What's that about? Right. NFC stands for near field communication. Okay. It's what lets you tap your phone to pay or share something. Tangem wallets use NFC to talk between the card and the app. Got it. Unfortunately, there was a bug in how that was being logged, and that's how private keys got exposed. So old code and new bugs all triggered by doing things in a specific order. Yeah, it's like a perfect storm. Wow. Sounds almost accidental. Right. But regardless of intent, it's still a pretty big security slip up. What I really want to know is how did Tangem react to all of this? Did they own up to it or did they try to hide it? That's what we're going to look at next. And believe me, their response says a lot about how seriously they take security and transparency. All right, let's get into it. So Tangem's reaction. Do they do the right thing or what? Well, from what we can tell from this article, they were pretty quick and thorough about it. Okay, good. Yeah, they didn't try to like sweep it under the rug, which is always a good sign. Right. They really attacked it from all sides to stop it right away and prevent it in the future. So what did they actually do? Well, first they immediately released an app update. Okay. You know, to patch the hole. Right. We got to stop the leak. Exactly. But then they went even further. Really? Yeah. They deleted all the logs and emails that might have had those exposed private keys. Wow. That's like going back in time and erasing it. Yeah, basically. Hold on. Wouldn't deleting stuff make people suspicious? Like, are they trying to hide something? I see your point. Transparency is super important with this kind of thing. For sure. But in this case, I think they were just trying to protect their users' privacy. 
Okay. Because remember, they didn't find any evidence that those logs were accessed by hackers. So better safe than sorry. Exactly. But they didn't stop there. What else did they do? They did a deep dive into their code looking for any of those old problem areas. Ah, uh, so really getting to the root of it. Yep. That shows they're serious about preventing this again. Good. And then on top of that, they're doing way more testing now, so any code changes get checked much more carefully. Okay, so they patched the hole, cleaned up the mess, and reinforced the walls. Pretty much. That's awesome. <laughs> but is it enough? Mm. Will people trust Tangem again after this? Well, some people are definitely going to feel uneasy. You can't blame them. True. Security breaches can break trust no matter what a company does. Right. But we have to remember that no system is perfect. Yeah. These things happen. It's not a matter of if but when. That's true. The important thing is how they handle it. Exactly. And in this case, Tangem really showed that they're all about transparency, user privacy, and fixing things. They took responsibility and took action. Yeah. But let's get real for a second. What about our listeners who actually have a Tangem wallet? What should they do, does this article say? It does. First, update your app, like right now. Okay, that's number one. Yep, the update has the fix. Got it. Then, to be extra safe, you can move your crypto out for a bit. Okay. Reset your wallet to factory settings and make a brand new wallet. Okay. You can do that with a new seed phrase or go seedless. Got it. Then move your funds back in. So basically a, a total refresh. Yep. Just to be sure. Smart. But what about people who are scared of seed phrases now? Yeah, I get that. Seed phrases are powerful. Yeah. But they come with responsibility, too. Right. The good news is Tangem also lets you make seedless wallets. Oh, cool. That means your private keys are created and stored right on the card. They never leave. So for people who want things easy, the seedless option sounds better. Could be. But no matter what you choose, this whole thing shows how important it is to be informed and take your security seriously. Absolutely. What other things can our listeners do to protect themselves, not just with Tangem, but with crypto in general? That's a great question. This Tangem thing reminds us that security is an ongoing process. For sure. It's not a one-time thing. Okay, so we've talked about how Tangem responded and how users can protect themselves. Right. But let's zoom out a bit. This whole thing with Tangem makes you wonder about crypto wallets in general. Yeah. Have there been problems like this with other wallets? There have. And it's not a huge surprise when you think about it. Why not? Well, crypto is decentralized, right? It's still pretty new, and things are changing all the time. True. That means there's lots of new cool stuff, but also more chances for things to go wrong. Yeah, that makes sense. There have been vulnerabilities in hardware and software wallets. It just shows that we always got to be careful and keep making things better. So no wallet is 100% safe. That's kind of scary. It's true. But there are things users can do to choose a good wallet. Like what? What should they look for? Well, first, do your research. Okay. Don't just pick the newest trendy wallet. Right. Look into the company. What's their reputation? Have they had problems before? How did they handle it? So basically check their history. Exactly. And look at their security features. Do they have two-factor authentication? What about multi-signature transactions? What are those? Multi-signature means multiple people have to approve a transaction. Oh, so like a safety check. Exactly. So um, more security features always better. Well, to a point, yeah. Yeah. But you also want it to be easy to use. Right. If it's too complicated, no one will use it. True. It's got to be a balance. Like, <laughs> you don't need Fort Knox for a dollar bill. Ex exactly. Think about what you need the wallet for. Are you just making small transactions here and there? Right. Or are you holding a ton of crypto? Okay. A cold wallet like Tangem might be good for long-term storage. Okay. But a hot wallet like a phone app is easier for everyday use. Got it. Pick the right tool for the job. Yep. But we can't forget about the human element. Oh, right. That's important. Yeah, we've seen that even the best security can be messed up by user error. Totally. It's like having a fancy alarm system, but leaving your front door wide open. Huh. So what are some common mistakes and how can we avoid them? Let's talk about passwords. Okay. We all have so many these days. It's hard to keep track. Passwords are the weakest link a lot of the time. Yeah. People use weak ones or use the same one for everything or write them down. Oh, yeah. Bad idea. Yeah, don't do that. Strong passwords are super important. Okay, so strong passwords. Got it. Any tips for making them and remembering them? Use a mix of uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and symbols. Okay. Aim for at least 12 characters. You can also use a passphrase. What's that? It's just a string of words that's easy for you to remember, but hard for others to guess. Oh, interesting. But I can barely remember what I went to the store for, let alone a bunch of random words. Huh. Well, that's where Password Manager comes in. 
What's that? It remembers all your passwords for you. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you just have to remember one master password. Okay, that sounds way easier. So password manager check. Mm -hmm. What else should we do to be safe? Watch out for phishing. Like those emails saying you won a lottery? Yeah, but with yeah. crypto. Always double check who sent it. Don't click on weird links and never ever give anyone your private keys or seed phrase. Good advice. Mm -hmm. Don't trust verify, but it feels like no matter what we do, someone's always trying to find a way in. It's true. It's like a constant battle between the good guys and the bad guys. Yeah. So what can we do to stay ahead of them? Stay informed, read security newsletters, follow crypto news, and keep your software updated. So it's an ongoing thing. Yeah, for sure. This has been a really interesting deep dive. We learned about what happened with Tangem, how to stay safe in the crypto world, and some great tips for protecting ourselves online. It's all about awareness. Exactly. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? I think the biggest takeaway is that crypto has huge potential. Yeah. But there are risks too. We have to be informed, take security seriously, and use tools from companies we can trust. Well said. So as we finish up, I want to leave our listeners with something to think about. Knowing what we know now about this tangent situation and everything we've talked about, what matters most to you, you, when choosing a crypto wallet or any security tool, do your research and make the best choice for you. That's right. And remember, security is a journey. Stay safe out there. Until next time, happy crypto exploring.